I'm in front you. of a, it's like a walled, a bubble. I don't know what it is. It's black, it's dark, and inside seems to have like these dark things coming and going. They're like shadows of animals, like um the puma or something like that, but they're just shadows. And then they move inside of this thing. It's like all of that is contained in this thing. And I can't see anything else. I know that the floor looks like like a forest. You can see roots in the dirt, but I have this thing in front of me. It's huge. It's immense. Look at yourself. Do you feel like you have a body? You said no? No body? I don't know. Describe what you look like. Look at your hands, your fingers. Your f hands and your feet. How many fingers do you have? Three fingers in each hand. They're long. And how about your toes? My what? Your toes. How many toes do you have? Two. Okay. I am blue. And my ears are like pointing like elf ears. Do you feel female or male? Female. I have a pouch in my back, uh, like a backpack kind of with arrows. And I have a bow to shoot those arrows. And I'm wearing a, it's like skirt kind of, it's brown. And on the top, it's brown too. It's like a short top hat kind of like a crown that has a little crystal on the forehead that is also blue. My hair is brown, it's worn in a ponytail, half ponytail. Are you wearing any jewelry? Just uh, the little crown that I have in my forehead. Are there any crystals within it or what shapes in it? Yes, there is a crystal that is hanging on the forehead. What color is it? It's blue. Beautiful. And do you feel like you're younger, older? I mean, what in human years will be around 20s, or 20, early 20s. Okay. You said that you're in a forested area where there's this big black ball and there's stinks and traps in it, like animals, right? Shadows, yes. Mm -hmm. What is your feeling about the sting? How do you feel about it? It feels very dark. Like whatever is contained there should not go out. How is it contained? I don't know. I feel like there was someone that did that. It was a male. It was a magician. He did that. He just didn't know what to do. He wanted to save the forest. And the only thing that he could do was to encase all of those shadows inside that bubble. But he's no longer alive or on this planet. Tell me what you're doing there. I'm just looking at the ball because I haven't seen something like that before. Keep moving time and space and keep describing everything that's happening. There is in front of me a... Um, it's not a tree, it's like a, a vein, like growing, something growing up, very tall. Just seeing it, how it goes up, up to the sky. And it's growing in front of me. It's cloudy. You said it's a, a vein? Like vine? A vine, yes. A vine. So like plant life vines growing? Yes. And how do those look? Do those look like they're healthy? It's like some of them and they are like hugging each other, going up, growing and growing and growing. And clouds what wherever I am, like there are clouds. Like if I look up, there are so many clouds white clouds even around me there are so many clouds and these vines are growing from the forest you said and do they go past the clouds how far do they get go past the clouds past the clouds keep looking around and tell me what else stands out of importance there are just many clouds around me like i can touch them like if they were yeah they're passing next next to me are the clouds low or are you tall enough oh. to touch them it seems like I am high up, but there is like a kind of an island in the sky where these vines are growing from. So I'm on the floor, but this floor is up in the sky. You said it was an island, so is there water around it or is it just floating in the sky? It is floating in the sky. Are you able to look down? Is there anything below you? I see other islands around floating. Other islands, you said? or items yes. islands islands got it and how do those look do they look like yours they do but they don't have the vine it's like i i put the seeds and it started growing you planted those seeds yes i did mm -hmm. do you remember where you got the seeds from i had them in my pocket i got them from the forest 
I was before. I feel like I had to come here and I don't know why. Is there something special about the seeds that you planted? They're magic, yes. And once you planted the seeds, the vines grow really fast or it's been time for them to grow? No, it was really fast. Keep moving the scene along and keep describing everything you're doing of importance. What's next? What do you do next? Flying. I'm flying on on an animal that can fly. I think it's a dragon. And that's how I can get up in the sky on those islands. But I live in the forest. We are just riding and flying around. So you, you live in the forest. Is that the forest of this island or is there another forest somewhere else? The islands are separated from the forest. The planet is the forest. The islands are floating in the sky. Of okay, got it. Mm -hmm. So there's a planet, and then this planet has floating islands. Right. Thank you. Yes. So then you, you flew up from the forest down below to these floating cities on your dragon. Tell me about your dragon. What does it look like? So sweet. It's very beautiful. It's big, and it's green and purple, and has a, a horn like a, like a rhino, or like a rhino. It has a horn like that. It's very old. I can tell. It's very wise. He's helping me because I'm alone. I have lost everything. Why are you alone? What happened? Why have you lost everything? I don't know. I have been alone for some time already. I don't know where they went. From. I don't know where my family went. I don't remember them anymore. Okay. So you said you're flying up. Um, where are you flying? We landed in the forest again. So you went back down to the forest? Yeah, and I'm next to the bowl. But the bowl has changed the color. It's not dark inside. It's green inside. But I don't trust it. I don't know what it is. And those vines that you put on, that you planted in the, in the seeds, where do you think those vines are? Have you ever looked at that? They went inside the bowl. They were like going up and then they went inside the bowl. That's why it changed. It's like it transmuted whatever it was inside. That's why it's green now. Okay, so so the vines went into the dark ball and it's yes. changed colors now. Uh huh. Tell me what you do next. Of it. Just watching the ball. The ball opened and then all the light went on the land like a blanket of light and all the animals and all the things that were inside they went on the earth but they were only light it's like it's like whenever the bowl opened it honored the life of all the things that were inside and i feel that's why i was by myself and i didn't know what happened everything that was everything was inside that bowl it was an experiment and I think the person that was doing that, I think it was Merlin. That's what I'm seeing, like a magician. <clears throat> like they depicted, they picked him in the movies with the big heart full of stars. But it didn't feel right. His energy doesn't feel right. It was an experiment that was um, out of control. So Merlin, the magician, is the one that put all these life forms inside this yes. ball and kind of trapped them in there? Yes. And he did something him. that they become, it became dark. But it's not that the beings that were inside the bowl were dark. They were not dark. He did something. Then he didn't know how to undo it. He left. I don't know where he is. I feel like he doesn't exist anymore in this plane. Well, that's good. Okay. So, but he left that behind. Um, he's just kind of experimenting. So those beings and animals that were in there, were they originally part of this forest? Yes. My oh. family was there too, but they, they're all gone. When the, when the bowl opened, their souls were honored, but they were just souls. They were not alive anymore in the forest. Okay. Was that the same for the animals too? Their, their souls... They became souls too? Yes, all of them. Okay, but they were free and they were positive now? They all were positive, yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> all the darkness that was in that bowl was transmuted by that vine. Wow. And, and all the lives were honored and they went where they needed to go. And now I feel, I feel that something made me feel complete. Like it came, that light came in me. And I feel complete. Wow, that's beautiful. And the love that you held, you planted a seed in the, 
the seed gave life, which then healed that inversion, that mm, dark experiment. That's beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> Good. Okay, and you said you feel complete. So what do you do next? That is some. That is something that feels like darkness that was near to that goal and I don't know what it is but I feel like I need to go explore <clears throat> but my dragon is asleep so I have to go by myself keep moving and seeing along and keep describing everything you're seeing and doing I found that it was like a cabin where this magician kept everything tell me about the cabin what does it look like what's inside of it it's like a, this warm light on <clears throat> but I can't see anything specifically. I need to get out because it's going to trap me in. I don't get out. It ain't close to me. And now I'm inside of a tree. And then I'm in um, this light. It's like almost greenish light, bluish greenish, but neon light. I want to expand to get out of the tree. But there is this darkness that is outside this light pushing me inside so I can stay trapped in the tree so I keep growing my light hoping for the dragon to see it or feel it and then I cannot get out I'm just in the tree inside the tree so his cabin was inside a tree yes and why is it that you can't get out my light is very strong and very powerful but there is like this darkness around that is just pushing me in it's just so much I cannot do it by myself. I'm still in a bubble of light, but I cannot just, I can just get out. I, I'm just in there in that bubble. I'm trying to call the dragon telepathically, but it's not working. So that dark spell, dark ma magic is not letting you, your energy or your light or your telepathic come out of that space is keeping it entrapped then? Yes. Okay. Keep moving time and tell me why happens next of importance do you get out i got out explode i exploded the tree with my light and then the dragon dragon sealed that darkness and it was transmuted it was very hard to watch because i don't like destroying trees they are my they're they're what they give me life they are very sacred it was very traumatic there is just a patch in the soil where the tree was and I feel that it's still a portal that is there, that is very dark. I don't know what else do I have to do. What is this guy doing all of that? Why did he do that? If the, um, the trees are so sacred, like you said. The tree was like screaming, screaming. Mm. And it's just open and then it exploded. And whatever is left, there is like a dark portal in there. And I don't know what to do about it. If the tree was so sacred, why do you think that he would have made his, you know, his kind of cabin or inside a tree? Why do you think he was doing that to the tree? Because he was sucking the life of the forest. Not just the tree, through the tree. He knew how to do that, how to trick the light. It's not, it was not an amateur. The tree was screaming. I can see it screaming. If it has a face, I can see the tree screaming. He was going through so much suffering. A very ancient and big tree. What did the tree look like? With a very strong and robust trunk. It was not very tall. <laughs> it was tall, but it was not a very tall tree like a pine tree. No. So you so you freed the tree from yeah. the entrapment then? I feel I like killed the tree. And I'm very sad because what I have to do was commanding to the forest to not help that tree anymore. Because it was the darkness was inside and whatever light that was coming it wasn't coming to the tree it was coming to the to that portal okay so the tree couldn't be helped that. anymore it was mm -hmm. it was disconnected in such a way that he wasn't receiving the life from the forest he was so sad and you have to stop yes. the rest of the forest to connecting to the tree because otherwise the light from the forest is going to go into that dark portal yes feeding something there the magician is on the other side of the portal mm. mm -hmm. what, else, what else can you tell me about this portal? Yeah. what do you do next you can just command the portal to be closed i have magic in my hands the same magic that is like from my heart 
and from my being inside my being i project this light and the light comes out of me like illuminates my body and then creates this bubble of light and then with that light that was generating i just commanded the portal to be closed and it's closed now wow beautiful i'm trying to see if i can reconnect the tree to the life of the forest although the tree exploded he's so tired he done thank me for doing that and told me that he endured so the forest was clear that he was trying to block the passage of the darkness so the the portal the darkness couldn't go and man like live in other trees he was containing that so nothing was coming out of the tree only he couldn't stop things coming into the portal wow that's, that's so beautiful thank you thank you to that tree what else does this tree tell you? Does he, does since this tree was connected to that dark portal, what what can he tell us about the Merlin and what's he doing um, with this dark portal? Anything else? So even he is like a very dark magician in this play. <clears throat> he's not doing this by himself. He's being controlled, and he was desperate to get this done, and that's why he started like experiment to get something bigger and bigger and he became super ambitious and then he created the bowl where he suck up the life of the entire forest the, the the beans of the forest but something went wrong and i don't know what it was so he couldn't do anything with whatever it was inside the bowl he couldn't do anything he just that was the ball. That's why the ball kept being in there, like nothing was happening with it. But then he kept the the portal open. So whenever he figured it out what he was doing, other things that he was commanded to do, he will come back and see what he could do with that. <clears throat> he was about of he failing with whatever he planned for, but also he didn't have time to keep checking what went wrong. He had to go to whatever he was after to do something else that was commanded to him so the tree received all the connection from the he was reconnected to the life of the forest to the other trees and then they they fill him out with love so his soul is not tortured or anything else like his soul can be healed but he's ready to go he's no longer he's not gonna be there anymore he gave his life for us Wow, we thank him. Anything else he wants to tell us before he goes? And then, do you do you assist him to go? How does that work? How does he go? The tree. How do you? How does he go? Do you assist him to go? How does he go? No. All the light came to the tree, and the tree was filled with light. <clears throat> and he took his last breath, and then he went away. And the tree has no light anymore, but he was in peace. That's beautiful. Thank you. And I know you were part of this forest area, this plant. How come um, this false magician Merlin was able to do that, put all your family, put all the animals in there into, you know, and compromise them like this? Where were you? How come you weren't pulled into that too? Just like he trapped me on the tree. It was a trap. That's why I couldn't see anything. That was not a cabin. That's why I couldn't see anything specifically inside the cabin because it was just let's say a hologram or something like that but nothing that was there existed in reality so you will come inside and then you will just be trapped <coughs> i understand how did you survive though and not everyone else where were you when they all got trapped in that black ball i don't know i i cannot remember let's go back to that time so, and space back to that time and space yes before when everything is healthy and vibrant and beautiful your family's there the animals are there back to that time of space before this happens we're there now tell me what you see and sense we were living in this kind of a like it was kind of a hot my mom my dad we have a little bit of a um and we were growing some food mm. they were like other huts next to us and then it felt all like they were a family then i was playing in the garden surrounded by trees i was always surrounded by trees because the forest was very rich and it was very beautiful and i went to a little creek and i was there playing with with what with an animal that looks like a horse kind of but he was like a young one a small one 
and suddenly there was this <clears throat> noise very weird dry noise and i run back when i went back there was nothing there it was not the structure but no one was there anymore <clears throat> i don't know why i wasn't reached by it it's like like when it when the when the ball opened when it was light it was like that when it was it was set as a blanket and then the noise was that blanket came up and closed down like close as the ball but it was a blanket of darkness that no one could see it and I was outside of that range but all my family and all the species all the ones that were my species were like in the range and then when the ball closed it took them all and trapped them there that's what happened and how about the horse that was with you was the horse saved? saved? No, he wasn't safe. He was a very young baby and he was running back to whatever. He was still in range. After some time, the dragon find me, found me and he showed me the floating islands and he showed me how I could um, expand my life in myself and create those bubbles I was creating. He showed me how to do that, that I could do that. And he took care of me in such a way that I wasn't feeling devastated or alone. And there were other dragons that they liked to hang out on that side of the island where the where they were like that side of the forest where they were floating islands. We hang out there a lot. It was so much fun. Beautiful. Anything else you can tell us about that time of space before that happened ball happened? I don't know how he found us. I don't know how he found this planet and how he came here. I think he just opened the portal and transported himself there and took over the tree. It wouldn't matter if it was our planet or another planet. What mattered to him is like they were light because there were so much low and no one will expect anything. But no one has seen him or anything like that. Like it's not like he <clears throat> deceive us or make my my people believe in, in, in nothing. No. He was doing it by himself. He was never seen. And then suddenly he did that. And I don't understand what he was trying to do. So he no need for consent from you, no need to trick you. He just did it. He just did it. So back to when now the people have been freed, all the animals have been freed, the souls. So you close that dark portal and the tree has been healed as well. The spirit is good. So tell me, what do you do next? Except of importance after that during the time that i wasn't with my family i was feeling that there was some emptiness in me and what happened is when i was a kid and the dragon found me he put away my uh, my memories he encapsulated my memories in such a way that i couldn't feel that loneliness so i could survive i could leave because otherwise i don't know if i could have survived and he was doing the best he could. And now that the light came back and then all the beings were honored, that emptiness or that feeling of like something is missing in my life became feel, like it was feel. I don't have that emptiness in me anymore. And then I could have back my memories. And I just feel plenty too. And the feelings of the dragon is like, my job here is done. And I think he's getting ready to part too because he's a very old being and he was just overseeing me. Ask him, does he have a connection to you? Why is it that he came out of all dragons to help you out? Yes, he said that he's my protector. And when I came to that planet, he he knew I he needed to protect me. I don't know. What else? Okay, thank you. <coughs> Tell me, what is it that you do next of importance after your mission's done? We go to a quiet place where there are other dragons around and there is like a ceremony with the dragons because they know that this dragon is going to part. So we are honoring his life. There are female dragons, there are younger dragons and they accepted me around because I'm kind of part of the clan. Just doing like the dragon that is about to part, he's doing what he taught me to do. He's leading up himself and then he takes the last breath and he parts. And everyone around is in so much love and gratitude. You said you went with other dragons. Was that still on that planet or did you go somewhere else? To these no, planets? it's on the planet. It's on the floating islands. Okay, so then there are other dragons too in some of these floating islands. Okay, beautiful. So after he leaves, he what leaves. Do you do next? 
there is a female dragon that wants to be with me and then and then that's the dragon that i'll be riding um but nothing special like there is not it's very beautiful i feel so much love and i'm happy but there is nothing i feel that i am just like walking on the forest finding food and the dragon i'll just go hang out with the dragon and she will fly me everywhere just what i used to do before of them all it's going and so in this planet or these islands are there any other people left is it still only you i haven't explored the whole forest or the whole planet but whatever i am <laughs> Everyone is gone. It's just me. Keep moving the scene along. I just keep describing everything you're seeing and doing. I'm just flying with my dragon, visiting the islands. There is a big storm. Um, the rain is raining, like raining very hard, and the clouds are very gray. And so we are in a cave. It's very harsh, but then it passes by, and that's it. But we have never had that before. But we are not afraid. We just in the cave waiting for it to pass by. It seems we are very close to the earth, to planet Earth too. But I don't know why I know that. I can see an eagle. The, the storm has passed already and I can see an eagle. Now I know it's an eagle because of my human form, but back then I didn't know what kind of bird was that because I was used to not have any animals around. Just confused. I don't know what happened. I don't know why is she here. There is something that came from the floor, like a like when crystals grow in the caves this thing came out of the floor like that is huge and i am i am nearby but i feel that i have no strength to to do anything about it i just want to part i can't do anything about it it just came like like the earth grew like that and i just don't want i don't want to fight anymore i'm tired i wanna go this that grew is it bad is it good what is it it's something that is not from this planet for sure i can't see if it is good or bad i can see if it is like uh natural i don't know if it is natural i don't think it's natural some infringement but i don't, i don't know where it came from or anything i feel so tired i feel sorry with the dragons because i don't want to fight anymore telling me that it's okay i'm just there so what do you do they take me to the place where where they did the ceremony for saying goodbye to the dragon and they put me in the place where they put the dragon and i'm ready to go the dragon i was riding the female she's a little bit sad but he under she understands that it's time tell me what happens do you go yes I glow, I glow up myself like uh, the other dragon taught me. And then I take my last breath. And tell me, what happens? What do you do once you leave your body? Where do you go? I go in up speed. Like, it's like I transport myself in a high speed somewhere. Now I am, I don't know where I am. It feels like I'm in a womb. So much light. I don't know. But I don't know what it is. It's just light. I've been hold, held by light. Do you feel like you're a boy, a girl within this womb? Just a little seed. I don't know what I am yet. Mm -hmm. Keep growing and let me know. What's that turning into? What are you turning into? I still don't know. A fairy. I'm a female. Are you still in the womb? So then you birthed out? I don't know what happened. I was just out. How is it? How is it that like you're in a womb, little seed, and then come out as a fairy? I, how, how are you born? It's like there were layers of, of like if I was in a flower, and there were layers of like, petals that open, and they open, and they open, and then I was there. Oh, beautiful. So you're born from a flower. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> That makes sense. And the flower, what color was it? What kind of flower was it? It was like a, uh, I forgot the name, an orchid. It was kind of pur purple, no, pinkish purple with a little spots that were like purple, purple, near to the, to the center. It was an orchid. And tell me, what do you look like as a fairy? Orchids are very special. They're so special. Tell me why they're special. Because they give life to us. They're so powerful. People doesn't know in your planet. They don't know. They play with them like they were an ornament. It's so sad. But they're very powerful because they can give so much life. If someone is depressed, you can give an orchid. The orchid will help the life come back to their hearts. 
and maybe they will have a fairy companion with them. Maybe. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> I think we'll all have to get some orchids. <laughs> but not the orchids from the not the orchids from the supermarket. No. No. The ones that are like maybe big planters that they're grown, like people that really care about growing them. Not just people that make them like die in a little pot. Orchids are not meant to be in little pots. Orchids are communities they shouldn't be by themselves the bulbs they shouldn't be by themselves in one little planter that's not how it should be it should be in bigger pots maybe but whenever you get an orchid try to make sure that you get it from someone that really care about orchids and then they they have all that life within them so thank you thank you and you as a fairy what is it that you do i'm a happy fairy I fly around, I talk to the bees, I have so many friends. We live in a little, like it's like a pond and there are so many flowers around all year round. So I get to talk to the bees, I like to joke around, I like to be mischievous sometimes. I like to bother the cats that sometimes come around, they're so funny, um, that's what I do. The cats can see you? Of course. Yes, they always see us. How about dogs? Do dogs see you? How about dogs? Do dogs see you? I don't like dogs much because they're so energetic and they they can't. Oh, you know, such a mess when they are around. Too much saliva. Ooh, I don't like that. But they can't see you though. They can't see me, yes. Okay. But I, I have other friends that like to play with dogs, but I don't like dogs. They're playful. They're beautiful, though. Don't, they are so sacred, but I like playing with cats better. Sometimes humans come around. I am in the planet Earth. It's back in time. Where are you on planet Earth? Planet Earth. I don't know. It's like a, it's like a little pond. There's like trees around, but it's like a valley and there are some houses dress funny like they dress with these big heavy dresses i don't know how they do and the kids come along some of the kids can see us huh? like humans they don't know they think the kids are gonna kill us or something but the kids are so they just know they just know how to respect us and they are happy when we are around them they smile. Some of, some of us like to go with a kid and stay with them for a little, long, a little longer. Maybe until they cannot see us anymore. Or maybe even longer. Like guardian angels. But fairies. So My life here is very quiet and happy. So you help out the children like kind of like guardian angels? What are some of the ways you help out the children? Yes. But we cannot protect them from harm uh, like the angels. The angels come and pay, and then they play symbols and they create these bubbles and all of that. We cannot do that. We might be able to do that, but that's not our magic. Our magic is always to put love and light in their hearts because we come from the orchids. We do the same. So if they are sad or if something happened in their world, that kind of like lower down their spark in their being, in their beings then we can help that spark to light up again. Or like, it's not like it's it's gone. It's just like it gets dim. So we help out to expand it again. So I think that's what some of us do. But I'm not with any kid right now. I like to be in the pond and play with the cats. Up to the bees. Anything else you could tell us of importance that you do as this fairy? I communicate with you. I can give you, I can tell you some secrets about Earth. Not because they are secrets, but because they are not talkable. Yes. Because yes. people don't know. I can tell those things. Yes. Can you, can you tell us some of that now? Yeah. You should trust mother. You should trust mother earth mother is not she's not a lot she's not a victim in the whole things that are happening around the world and that's why we can be still happy because what is happening is kind of although it's some infringement that the humans have done within the disconnection they have from earth and then they are not like being very functional to their 
environment as one with us nature mother is not a victim in any time she can just say okay enough is enough and she will regrow herself and she will put everything away and and then many people they don't know this and then they are filled with fear but mother is not a victim she is in control of many things i don't know if that's a secret but i just see that many many of you are in fear and that's not how it should be what people should be worrying about in this world is how to be a functional part of the environment be one with nature know the cycles of nature know the the things that we offer to them comes in cycles and learn to live in those cycles understand that you've been crowded in little places and the world is there for you to take not take us the powerful ones that can do whatever with the world no just expand food is not it's not like they say it's not scarce it's not unlimited because life is not unlimited is not, food is unlimited because life is unlimited it's infinite Everything is just a make-believe, and earth is not that. Seeds can be planted anywhere, and love will make them grow. If you cannot grow a tree, you cannot grow tomato, or whatever you want to grow. If you feel you cannot, you can call us. We can assist you on your expansion of life. That's what we, our fairies, are here for. To help expand life, to help expand the spark. We are from Earth. We are one with Earth. We can only bring life. So when you can, you want to create life, call us. We will there. We will be there for you. That's why fairies are known by being happy and and then joking around and why? Because we are life. We are we are here to expand life. Is there anything else you would like to know? Well, it was beautiful all that you said. I, I agree with you. Um, yes, Mother Earth is not limited or a victim. She's constantly providing us with soil and all these yep. elements to can, to grow life. And all we have to do is plant a seed, right? To manifest and grow it for ourselves. With words, you can plant seeds too. The seeds of the mind. It's like you humans are containing these little spaces and earth is just, just so much bigger than that. So yeah, in those little spaces, there is a lot of, a lot of things that are happening that are like infringing the way of the light and the love can span. But going out of them will, will help you to understand that that's not the life. That's not it. There is much more to that. Yeah, Mother Earth is always working on cleansing, cleansing, cleansing. All this toxicity, all these things are happening that are not helping the soils, that are not helping the trees, that are not helping the creation of food that is expensive. But these are just like little spaces. There are so many more spaces where you can breathe the clean air, you can eat the clean food that you can find their beautiful flowers. Not everything has been contaminated as they, they try to make you think. The magic you have in your heart is what is the same magic that Mother Earth uses to help cleanse the life, the love, and the gratitude. The gratitude with the wind, the gratitude with the fire. Everything that transmutes, she can put symbols. The angels come and put symbols. He bubbles inside of that toxicity. How can you be a bubble within that toxicity? By generating life with love, by planting your own seeds, by being grateful with your water, by transmuting the water, by transforming the water, by using the symbols, by calling us and help. we'll help you. You can be a bubble within the toxicity. By you is it can be also exhausting because it's like going against the current. You have to do it a lot all the time. But we understand that some people that grew in a city, that grew up in a city, and they have this this wave of living. They cannot just go and live in commune with nature, and <laughs> they we don't know. So we understand that you need to create bubbles and live within the toxicity in those bubbles but you have all the support and those bubbles what do they do is just help earth so much they help mother so much because it's less extension 
of land that she needs to start to keep transmuting all the time. Such a powerful being as a human being. We just wish for you to be happy. For everyone on the planet to be happy. Sorry, I cannot tell you anything about darkness and how to do this and that because that's not what I vibe with. I I just want to be happy and that's what I am. I just want to be hope and that's what I am in light. Thank you. I love that. It's beautiful. Thank you for all your beautiful fairies who are spreading love everywhere. We love you, honor you, and respect you. Thank you, Aurora. Thank you. Such important messages you gave us today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so beautiful. Okay, I am now like two now. Um, let's leave. Um, so thank you, thank you once more, fairies, and everyone who's spoken to us. We love you. Yes, yes, I've been here waiting for this moment. Oh, yes, so important. Thank you, um, higher self. She said that she felt, um, I forgot what it was she said specifically, but she said that something about her life would be transformed coming up. Or what was it that you told her higher self? Yeah, I, we were talking to her, so she will be open to us. And now I can tell what is the change that she's going to have. She needs to live through it, but it's going to be something beautiful. Yes, of course. Of course. Thank you, higher self. And if I may ask you questions now? Yes. Okay, first of all, you took her to... A uh, life where she was, um, wow, so so powerful, right? The planet and the floating islands, and this Marlin, uh, Merlin, dark magician, who a lot of people actually on Earth, especially in the spiritual community, spiritual command, uh, community, think that he's he's positive, but he wasn't. As we know, he was um, horrible. The experiment that it did, that he did on that on that planet with no one's consenting and um yeah so thank you for showing us that and then how beautiful was that that she planted the seed and spread the light and really protected the space but then you said that towards the end she was really tired and um you said that this planet was pretty close the space was pretty close to the earth so can you tell us about that does does the space have any connection to the earth yeah this was like a one of the first spheres that was created um, to in the understanding of how could it be a place where all the species could be um, living together. And, and then it was left there. And that's why no many species were coming in. But later on, when Earth was created and some things started to happen in terms of infringement, we thought that it was good to start moving along some of those species that were very endangered to these other space that was ready for them. And that's what happened whenever she saw the eagle coming in. It was just the movement from the planet to the other. Got it. Thank you. So, but such beautiful work she did. Anything else? What were the what was the main reason you showed her that life? What lessons did you want her to learn from that life? She said she just she has so much doubt in her heart. Like if she she's always questioning if she's doing right the right thing or if this is gonna bring her to the place that she should be. She gets confused. She gets very overwhelmed about little things. But what she doesn't know is how much power she holds to transmute things in her life, transmute the pain, to transmute the harm. She's very powerful. She's always in doubt. So we wanted to show her this life where she was just practicing the enlightenment and then the power that that will come, will bring with her. And also, the fact the dragon was with her all the life but she's not alone she's never alone she always has some something or some someone that will be looking out for her always every single minute we're not talking about just the our team our team of guides we're talking about physical physically incarnated beings she's never alone it might be far away but they're always looking out for her and then now she has her cats that is always something or someone like that dragon like her grandma that is always something thank you herself what a beautiful life to show her that 
And then also you took her to the fairy life, which we could see why you would want to bring some of that happiness there. And maybe that can help her alleviate some of the doubt. Tell, tell us, why did you show her the fairy life? Because that's her essence. And that's why it's so hard for her to have to live in this life with so much deception. Because she just wants to be hope and happiness. And no matter what happened to her, or no matter what happens to her, she always choose to keep loving she always chooses to keep loving she always she it doesn't matter it, she she goes through it like a champion and then even if there is a scar or there is like a very hard process she chooses to keep loving and then to have hope she what is very sad for her is just that she cannot just be that she cannot just trust any everyone she cannot just be what she really is to have that essence because she needs to take care of herself too but that's her essence all the way it's like that little fairy reincarnated in this body and that's what she wants to be all the time there are other things that have happened to her that have made them make her hard not so trusting but that's not what she wants to be and it saddens her so much because she doesn't want to be that she just feels that she has to thank you higher self for all those messages today i know that this will be life-changing for her such an honor <laughs> once more to be doing a session on her and um with her and thank you okay thank you all right let me see if i can think of any questions i'll be quick well about these lives you showed her. So back to um, the life where this um, Merlin magician kind of took it upon himself to, you know, invert that that um, space. So thankful that she was able to assist it so that it wouldn't stay like that. And, you know, so you want to tell us about um, maybe just humanity overall, about watching out because, uh, like I said, a lot of spiritual, the spiritual community thinks that this magician is positive. Um, but you know, he's a magician for, for a reason. He's an illusionist. It's just an illusion. So anything you want to tell us before we begin her body scan? There are different fractals of the, the same beings. And remember that the beings come to earth or to any incarnation to experience. This guy is a very, very, very powerful being that have had very much, many positive incarnations and through those incarnations some of the humans have known him and those are the some of the stories that you might have heard not all of them are from this darkness and then there are two different reasons why first because it's a positive kind of incarnation or fractal or because it was before he became the darkness he was in this moment in time that I presented in that life. But now that is a this this powerful inverted entity that is a magician that could yeah. do things. I mean that that was pretty powerful what it could do there. So I mean can it just it just connect to its other fractals and invert those and use those as bridges or portals yeah. to infringe yes. upon others when they connect to his supposed once benevolence? Yes. It is not his intention. He's very dark. He has been consumed by darkness. But we have to always remember he was an organic being. It didn't came from the darkness itself. He became darkness, but he didn't came from it. The darkness has manipulated his infinite power that he has awakened. So it is not his intention to go back to what he was before, all of this darkness, all of the feeling of the power that he feels because of whatever he knows. It's just like he has been drunken into it, like he has been satiated with it. Or satiated is not the right word because he's not filled with it yet. It's like he always wants more. But within all of this cloudness, he hasn't even think about going back to the... He will repulse the times wherever he was a positive one. That's why he's not coming back to those things. He will repulse that. He doesn't want to be around that. So higher self, can he use, um, since he is a fractal, can he use, say there's a positive um, Merlin somewhere? Um, what we teach is that this Merlin became one with the artificial intelligence. So um, are you, um, can this artificial intelligence still connect to the other fractals of of it, of him to infringe? Yeah, no? that what is... That, so what I mean to say is that that was that that 
that that was positive in him is not anymore. So it is important to not feel, feed those stories of positiveness right now because there is so much infringement in the information that people receive. That little is like that fract those fractals and those stories that were positive may be just lies for people to get into the traps of the darkness that he is right now. So what I'm saying is, even though he had the past and some of the fractals that were positive, that's not what it is right now. So if there is not like a pure source that is telling those stories whenever he was a positive one, then better just treat it like a, the darkness that he is. And in certain way, we can say that this is of a manipulation of those, you know, fractals to induce darkness. We can say that. But as I just said, he will repulse. you think even that he was a positive being. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Okay, so yes, not advice to connect to this because then you could tap into something really dark, like how that dark bubble was. And yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, higher self. All right. Um, anything else you want to tell us about this? this Not topic? really. Okay, very good. So let's continue on. Let's uh, hire self. Is this a good time now to begin her body scan? Yes. Thank you, hire self. Um, do you, does she need to use the restroom before we begin the body scan? No. No, she's good. Okay. All right. Thank you, hire self. Let's go ahead and begin her body scan. Which of the masters or archangels would you like hire self to assist you during the body scan? Uh, Metatron. Metatron is an archangel that is with us all the time with her. He, he's there. All is, is incredibly the presence that he has in her life. Metatron, Michael, Kendra, Archangel, Raphael, and whoever else do you want to call? Beautiful. Yes. yes. Whoever else. Benevolent. Thank you, Higher Self. All right. Higher Self connects us to Archangel Metatron. I'd like to speak to him now. Kalima is also here. Kalima. Beautiful. Greetings, Archangel Metatron. Greetings, my child. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Honor you. Respect you. We love you. <laughs> and Archangel Michael. Yes, here I am. Thank you, Michael. And Archangel Raphael. Here I am. Thank you, Raphael. And Divine Mother Kalima. Yes. Thank you. We love you all. Yeah. Honor you and respect you. I'm going to speak to you collectively along the way, um, mostly in the higher yeah. self. Thank you for being here and assisting the higher self with this beautiful body scan today. Let's go ahead and start uh, scanning. And if I may ask at the beginning, when uh, she went to her happy place, when she was, you know, um, going into the hypnosis induction, she went to happy place and she was a little girl with these beautiful kind of uh, like crystalline wings. What was that? What was that about? Why who was she there? What were you trying to tell her there? She was a fairy as her happy place to be able to be that fairy, just filled with love, with the power of expanding life for each for all each person that she meets without being like fearing that someone is going to deceive or that someone is going to harm her. That's her happy place where she can be herself. My life is so close to this life and that's why there are many, many memories about it. And then they feel so much like like in the same same space and plane. It's because they're very close. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful messages. So loving. Just incredible. What a beautiful healing today, Higher Self and Team. At this point, I've asked all her questions. We completed the body scan. Anything else, Higher Self, that I could have asked that I haven't? About her lineage on Earth. About her lineage? On Earth. Okay, tell her it, about that. It's true that she walked hand to hand with Jesus, with Jeshua. It is true that she was part of her his family at some point. It is true that in her heart is the magician, is the goddess, is the priestess that she was in the time that he walked the earth. She needs to understand and feel in every cell of her body the power that she holds because she's loved, no doubt. She can, she's an alchemist like you, or she's an alchemist like you. Yes, of course. 
Thank you. Thank you. Any final messages for her higher self before I bring her back? He has the strength to go through life as it is presented right now. There is going to be a time where she's going to feel plentitude about the consistency or the congruency between what she thinks and she feels and what she does for service to others. Right now, I might be confused, but it's just that she's living the experience of the 3D world job. And this is just a jump start on understanding and changing her system of beliefs about money and wealth. There is going to be a time where she's going to be dedicated to her children, where she's going to have a loving, loving husband that is going to be her partner and hand to hand. They're going to build this braid, this bride or braid that they that means they're the roots for this new tree of life that they're bringing upon. There is a time and space where all her heart desires will come true because of the power of the love that she holds. What she calls will come. She has had sparkles of that. And this is a time of transition to a more relentless manifestation. Believe in yourself and in that every time that you speak your truth every time that you consider the other, every time that you want to see and understand the other is doing the best they can. You are seeding that love. We thank Aurora for having the opportunity of creating these spaces for cleansing, healing, and seeding love in others. We always thank you. Thank you. Thank you as well, higher selves, higher self, and all the higher selves. It is an honor truly to be here holding the space of infinite love for others to heal themselves. Thank you. Yeah. So what we are doing now is to jump her from, from now to that timeline, that time and space. That's the big change. She's coming out of that transition to her most organic time life, timeline yes. where she's just connected to this new community where she has eyes to see the community that she's going to be part of in her physical space don't be afraid of changes because changes are coming be strong make decisions with your heart thank you thank you harissa for all those beautiful messages i love you honor you respect you i want to thank metatron michael rafael kalima divine mother anyone else who assisted today we send you love now all those beautiful entities that passes and polarize we love you, honor you, and respect you. Thank you, everyone. May I bring her back now? Thank you. I'm going to bring yeah. her back now, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> tell Guys, you. they tolerate each other, but they don't lay each other next to each other. Like, the great car <laughs> doesn't like the other one to be so close to her. And I'm going to show you this. Uh, whoa! <laughs> Well, this is the closest they've been. And then I have the one for seven years and the other for six years and the other one for two years. Wow. Sounds like you healed them today too. <laughs> <laughs> this they are so beautiful. So gorgeous. I'm so proud of you. You did incredible. I was able to see and sense everything with you. You just did. Oh my God. Oh. So fine. Oh my god, I have so much breath. I had like a tourmaline in my head and my mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. And when I was in the first live, what they say that I said that I had to explode the tree because I had to get out yeah. of it. Yeah. The tourmaline also broke. Oh in, yeah. Like in little pieces. Yeah, they'll do that. That's crazy. That is so <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like, what? Just kind of exploded in your hand? Yeah, it, 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 what? it. Yeah, look. That's crazy. It, like... Oh, wow. Thank you oh, to the tourmaline. We love the tourmaline. Thank you. Yeah. I think that a lot of pain because the tree was so infringed. It was so sad. I know. It was so sad. I could feel that. Yeah. Oh, such an important session you had. So beautiful. Thank you. So empowering for sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Go create and manifest that beautiful life. You're gorgeous, both inside and out. Go, go, go. Create it, manifest it and bring it in, bridge it in. <laughs> and whenever they say, whenever you ask how many years they will regress me, 
I would say they say 10 years and then the higher said explained to me that it was about my reproduction, uh, my reproductory uh, system. Yes. That's yeah. why specifically what it was being um it was being uh regressed because it was not so so long for me to be able to have kids. So they regress it <laughs> so I can have them. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. I agree. <laughs> So now I have a, I have a womb of a 27 years old. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> That's a good womb. <laughs> it's 333 three, three here. Perfect timing. I love you, honor you, and respect you. Thank you for being here with me today. I'll see you around, yeah? Thank you so much, Aurora. Yes, I'll see you around. Thanks. Thank you. I love you. I'll see you yeah. later. Bye, beautiful.